All right, this is on. We're gonna get started. Uh, I'm really excited about, like I said, this format and, but more, more than that, these people, um, some of whom I've had the pleasure of working with and some of whom I am very much looking forward to uh, hearing from. So if you're hoping to be at the Reconciliation, Diversity and Inclusion Workshop, please go to the conference room down the hall. You're in the wrong room, it's okay. We're all, we're all a little lost here. Um, that can be the theme of the conference. Uh, but here in the theater, we've got our first knowledge spotlights. So these are seven minute hits of inspirations, stories about the work that our network members are doing. Uh, I'm gonna go through uh, all of them and, and introduce the, the panel that will come on afterwards. And then I'm gonna sit down. You're not gonna see me for a little while. Uh, so first up, we'll have Shauna Ray of Radar Media. Next will be Tashin and Araith from Aura Freedom. And then we'll wrap up by hearing Dr. Amanda Zavitz from Gender Equality Coalition of Canada. I did not get my phonetic uh, description of names. And so I apologize if I mispronounced anything. Uh, Shauna, I know well, so I'm pretty sure I got that right, but I, I don't know all of you well. So I'm excited to hear from you. And if I got that wrong, I, I'm here to learn. Um, and then we'll move right into our first panel discussion, Advancing Gender Equality in Canadian Politics, um, which uh, will be led by moderator uh, Kylie Adair, editor of Future of Good. Um, and then uh, they will send you off uh, to lunch after that. So you're in here to lunch, lots of amazing information, have your notebooks out feel free uh, to share things uh, as they inspire you, which I'm sure they will. So first up, Shauna, I invite you to the stage. Hello, amazing humans. Uh, my name is Shauna Ray and I'm the founder of Radar Media. I'm looking to build partnerships for collaboration and for funding opportunities I grew up in small Ontario town. Now I'm back living in rural Ontario. I'm not an executive director. I'm not a researcher. I didn't take women's studies in school and I don't even have a university degree. And I came to feminism later than most of you. It's only been through sitting in my own uncomfortableness, shame, and with my own biases and complicity that I'm standing here today. I continue to walk a humble, vulnerable road to allyship. I worked in radio journalism for a decade. Uh, after that, a decade in communications, public relations and community engagement. The last few full-time jobs I had were with the Community Futures Organization, supporting rural entrepreneurs. My journalist brain is always asking questions and working at Community Futures, these questions came up. Why did collecting the stories of minority entrepreneurs in rural Canada seem like box checking? Come to think of it, where were the people of color, the pride celebrations and the observance of cultural days in my own rural community? I wanted to change things and the best way I knew how was to be a conduit for other people's stories. I started Radar Media to amplify underrepresented voices in 2020. I quit my job in the fall of last year to launch a podcast amplifying women identifying and non-binary rural entrepreneurs called Clearing a New Path. I also started sending out a weekly newsletter aimed at engaging rural folks. Why did I focus on rural women entrepreneurs? Have you ever heard of the Jolly Jumper? Olivia Poole was the first indigenous woman in Canada to secure a patent for that product. At the time, she lived in rural Manitoba. Maybe you've heard of Miss Vicky's potato chips. The real Miss Vicky perfected her recipe on her farm in Alliston, Ontario. One in six Canadian women-led businesses operates outside of an urban center. I'd love to tell you how many of these women belong to minority groups, but Stats Canada doesn't count them. If you didn't know about these two women, Imagine how many other rural women you don't know about today. I felt those stories needed to be told. I sought out black, indigenous, women of color, women with disabilities, trans women, and queer entrepreneurs from rural and remote Canada. 
I also spoke to researchers and organizations that have an interest in and support these folks across the country. I've interviewed over 30 people now from the Yukon to PEI, essentially from coast to coast, and folks have listened to the podcast in over 300 Canadian communities. Unsurprisingly, there are a few themes. Access to capital is the number one barrier. Overt gender discrimination. Consistent racism, homophobia, ableism, and ageism. Not only a lack of representation on councils, committees, boards, and chambers of commerce, but no one seems to care. I started to ask questions again. I wonder if female mayors across the country are aware of just how women are being treated in rural Canada. In April, I partnered with, partnered with the Canadian Women's Chamber of Commerce to host Your Voice Matters, a rural women town hall, a virtual event. I invited over 400 women identifying mayors from across Canada to hear the stories of four guests. The sole purpose was to ensure these women were heard and that the municipal leaders were the audience. And they told more stories. One guest told of applying for a line of credit at her rural bank. After being told she had one of the most comprehensive business plans a bank manager had ever seen, he pointed at her pregnant belly and asked, but what are we gonna do when the baby comes? Her application was denied. One guest experienced racism at the hands of her local chamber of commerce and had been fighting to have her complaint addressed. This sparked another question. Chambers of commerce are organizations that charge membership fees and are supposed to advance and support community businesses. How could I spark change? My next project is creating a report card of Canada's 425 chambers of commerce as it relates to diversity, equity, and inclusion practices. But it won't be me coming up with the criteria. Five post-secondary students from minority groups will be assessing, assessing the chambers this summer. And what about my own rural community? Six amazing women, one is with me here today, came together in, rural, in the rural Ontario County where we live because we wanted to change things. We interviewed all the social service agencies that were supposed to be supporting folks from minority groups, the county administration, the libraries, settlement services, and we talked to pride organizations. Where were the gaps? How could we help? That led to the creation of the Rural Diversity Alliance. We're also looking to form partnerships and explore funding to advance our work. Where I live was the site of one of the last rallies of the KKK in Canada. Just 20 minutes from me is where a Muslim family was murdered just one year ago. Within our county borders are three First Nations communities. At least one is still without regular access to clean drinking water. White supremacy lives here. It lives everywhere, but in rural Canada, we are still draped in denial. Folks are protesting. Many showed up right here in Ottawa, paralyzing the city under the guise of freedom. And what and, and that we are losing, quote, our Canada. I believe we have to mourn the disconnection all of it has caused because we can, before we can stitch back the ripped pieces of our Canadian identity. We Canadians are not all free. I haven't figured out yet how to change things, but I know that it's urgent that I try. I'm using the power and privilege I have where I live meeting people where they are. I hold out hope that we can heal in my lifetime. Hope is sometimes all we have. Thank you. In an interview at Women's Habitat, a domestic violence shelter in Toronto, shelter staff told Aura Freedom about a woman staying at the shelter whose child does not want to visit their father because he is violent. But if the mother doesn't send her child, she'll be held in contempt of court. So who is protecting this mother and this child? Because the system sure as hell isn't. 
Then we see the Amber Alerts. It is a fact Indigenous women and girls make up only 4% of Canada's population, but 50% of human trafficking survivors. It is also a fact that 40% of women and girls over the age of 15 have reported experiencing physical and or sexual violence. So why aren't we calling femicide a national emergency yet? Hi everyone, my name is Orla. And I'm Tashin, and we're representing Aura Freedom, a grassroots intersectional feminist organization working in Canada to eradicate gender-based violence and human trafficking through advocacy and education. In 2020, Aura Freedom released our Relentless Resilience Report with calls to action to Canadian leadership for holistic change to address the root causes of gender-based violence. Relentless Resilience is a Beijing plus 25 parallel report and highlights the violence experienced by the most marginalized women and girls in Canada and their resiliency in response to the violence, oppression, and indifference that they face. While Relentless Resilience began as just a report, it grew into a campaign and then into a movement. So it was out of this report that we built the GBV Resource Centre, funded by the Canadian Women's Foundation and Toronto Foundation. This is what we're here to talk to you about today. The GBV Resource Centre is an easily accessible online destination for educational tools and information about GBV in Canada. We provide free materials on the definitions, statistics, and root causes of gender-based violence in Canada for educators and advocates looking to spread awareness of GBV in their communities and in their classrooms. But we didn't just look at the statistics and the figures, we went one step further. We rooted our resources in the lived experiences of survivors and in the expertise of frontline workers who have worked in this field for decades. On the GBV Resource Center, you can read their stories and see the real people behind the statistics. Based on the valuable knowledge from survivors and frontline workers alike, the GBV Resource Center also has information and resources for people experiencing violence in their day-to-day -day lives. From warning signs to safety plans to various helplines across Canada, we believe that these resources can make a real difference for preventing violence and helping women get to safety. Finally, the GBV Resource Center is keeping our leaders accountable. In this section highlighted here, we examined how GBV is affecting the achievement of each of the UN Sustainable Development Goals or SDGs. More than 25 years after the Beijing Declaration, we at Aura Freedom are still working towards establishing femicide as a legally recognized term in Canada and a nationally recognized emergency. Alongside our GBV Resource Center, Aura Freedom also launched the HT Info Hub or Human Trafficking Info Hub, an online resource center also funded by Canadian Women's Foundation to draw focus to the pressing issue of human trafficking as a form of gender-based violence in Canada. Our HD Info Hub is part of Aura Freedom's ongoing relentless resilience movement to end gender-based violence in Canada. It is an accumulation of over a decade of Aura Freedom's grassroots human trafficking prevention work with survivors, communities, colleagues all around the world with a focus of addressing the root causes to prevent sexual exploitation across Canada and beyond. The Human Trafficking Information Hub is a trauma-informed and survivor-centric resource that aims to change the way human trafficking is viewed. We know that real-life cases are not what they look like in movies. So the Info Hub has a range of resources from the definition of course of control, a trafficker's favorite. And although we can't always see course of control, it is almost present in all sexual exploitation cases, human trafficking, and as well as intimate partner violence and domestic violence. You can find other terms available in free downloadable PDF that you can use, as well as a timeline that highlights the luring grooming process as shown here. And you can also find other interactive details and information that highlights the myths and misinformation about human trafficking. Our information hub also highlights barriers in identifying survivors of human trafficking and ways that they may be hesitant to reach out for help and support. You can in fact employ the knowledge and expertise shared throughout our info hub to build your own grassroots preventative programs or build on the ones that you already have in place that puts survivors at the center of the work and builds resilience and empowerment across your communities. And within months, we have noticed and observed that our information hub has become the to-go resource in Toronto and across Canada for service providers, youth advocates, researchers, 
educators, and other anti-trafficking stakeholders. Here at Aura Freedom, we believe that eradicating gender-based violence and human trafficking is achievable, and it's a lot easier than you think. Eradicating gender-based violence and human trafficking is advocating for gender equality. It is being anti-racist. It's learning about the genocide of Indigenous peoples in Canada. It is supporting any disadvantaged women and girls that you know. And it's speaking out against homophobia and hatred. And with that being said, Orla and I would like to share Aura Freedom's Get Help page, orafreedom.org slash get help. Please feel free to take a picture of it right now. And we highly encourage you to take some time to explore Aura Freedom's Relentless Resilience campaign, a bold multimedia awareness campaign that created GV Resource Center, as well as the Human Trafficking Information Hub. And to everyone in the room today, if you haven't been told lately, your work matters and you're so important. And in fact, it saves lives. And we salute you and all the grassroots gender-based violence people in the room. Thank you for everything that you do. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. We'll be around. And as we go through the exciting conference, and we'd also like to thank Equal Feature for inviting us today. Thank you all so much and excited to meet you all. Good morning, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here to represent the Gender Equality Coalition of Ontario. And I'm thrilled to be here to learn about all the other organizations that are doing such great work in Ontario and in Canada abroad. Uh, my name is Dr. Amanda Zavitz. As my full-time paid profession, I am a professor of sociology and women's studies at Fanshawe College and uh, Western University. In my part-time life, I am a mom, a, a wife, and a small business owner. In my spare time, I am the chair of the Gender Equality Coalition of Ontario. My husband and my children often ask me why I work so many hours that I'm unpaid for, and I tell them that's advocacy. Uh, I have a famous quote that's one of my favorites. The philosopher um, Dr. Uh, Edmund Burke says, the only thing necessary for the perpetuation of evil is for good people to do nothing. I've never been able to stand around and do nothing. So at the Gender Equality Coalition of Ontario, we're a grassroots organization. We're located in London, Ontario. We work as community leaders to foster awareness and empowerment of gender equality by creating positive social change in our community. The Gender Equality Coalition of Ontario was founded in 2019, and we work to create communities where individuals have equal access to every opportunity that is unbiased by gender. We're committed to diversity and inclusion, and we value individuals from all intersectionalities, including genders, cultures, age, races, orientations, locations, and abilities. We're unique in that we believe that gender justice can be only achieved when all people intersectional genders are included. We're currently working under a wage grant and we have two executive directors of the coalition. They are Linda Bartlett and, sorry, Linda Davis and Danny Bartlett. Um, I'm the chair of the coalition and we have 10 active board members. What makes us unique is our mission. We believe in the intentional inclusion of men, women and gender diverse people in the fight for gender justice. We agree with the light bell hooks that feminism truly is for everybody. The goal for me as the chair of the Gender Equality Coalition is to move beyond uh, um, words to action or rhetoric to action. The goal is to move beyond being simply an ally to an accomplice. And in doing so, we host monthly speaker series presentations where we've had wonderful people speak for us. We aim to have gender diverse presentations where we have at least one male, one female, and one racially diverse speaker on each panel presentation. We've hosted amazing people like Jim Stanford, Michael Kaufman, Mohammed Boabeg, Terence Kernahan, Lindsay Matheson, Jeff Pereira. We, we believe in the model that what we do is more important than what we think or what we say. In terms of other actions, we create partnerships. We're interested in creating more partnerships and collaboration with people like you. We partnership with Fanshawe College, with Young Leaders of Canada, with UNICEF Western, with the University of Western Ontario. And the hope is that we can establish community connections with other organizations to create presence in the community and create greater awareness of what true femininity means in Ontario. In terms of actions, we, we advocate and we, we 
create community education. We have outreach for local politicians and within the city of London. We've presented to the provincial government of Ontario. We've done two United Nations presentations and we continue to work for things like International Women's Day. We also work with Safe Cities London and we have a youth chapter if you're interested in joining our uh, coalition or our movement. The goal of our coalition is to continue as an organization to uh, find a way to move beyond um, our current funding limitations and opportunities. We continue, we want to continue to make a positive impact in our community and we want to grow as an organization as I'm sure many of you do as well. We uh, fight to inform and disrupt. We want to create or foster education and act I, active allyship or um, achievement. And we want to achieve gender justice for all people. We believe that to be a feminist in any authentic sense is to want to liberate all people from sexist role patterns, domination and oppression. Oh, look at me, I got further behind. Um, so if you're looking for me um, throughout the uh, conference. I would look forward to connecting with you. If you're interested in joining our coalition, you can take a picture of the screen here. I'm happy to be reached at either emails that are listed there. And you can also find our website at the bottom link. I look forward to meeting with you throughout the next couple of days, and hopefully we can work together to collaborate and achieve gender justice. Thank you.